Hello, my name is Marcus from Gigahertz Solutions. I will briefly explain the operation of AME3030B. After receiving the order, you will find a grounding cable for potential related measurements in addition to the measuring device. A small card showing the building biological reference values, the calibration confirmation and our manual inside the package. On the device itself, you can see the display right here at the front. Here at the right side, the power switch. Here's the signal switch. And here the socket for connecting a grounding cable. Otherwise, there are no other connectors or switching options on the device. On the back down here is the battery compartment holding the included 9-volt block battery. And here above... You see the internal serial number of the ME3030 together with our company logo. To measure, you just have to push the power switch upwards. And the device is already active and measuring. To turn on an additional sound signal, you push the power switch further up. Now a field strength proportional sound signal similar to that of a Geiger counter is active. That means little field strength, weak sound signaling, a lot of field strength, strong sound signaling. Via the signal switch up here, you can now choose between E for electrical field and M for magnetic field. Depending on your choice there, you can see this little line in the display, symbolizing if the measurement is active in E or M as well. The magnetic field is measured in the unit nano Tesla and the electric field in the unit of volt per meter. The measuring device measures only one dimension both electrically and magnetically. That means our measurement sensors are built in up here. The device is typically held down here. There is nothing special to be taken into account for magnetic field measurement. Only the total load must be measured in three dimensions. That means once I measure in this position, write down the value. Switch into this position, memorize the value. And measure in this position as well, again noting the value. All three values are quartered, added together. And from that, the square root is taken. This gives you the three-dimensional value that is in effect on you at the moment. There are two options for the E-field measurement. One is the potential free measurement, in which you can move around the room freely with your device, or better still, the measuring device is placed down and the measurement is carried out with you standing in a distance. Not to distract the E-field with your body and therefore have less measurement tolerance. Here too, the three-dimensional load must be measured in all three axes. For the potential related measurement, you put this small jack into the socket here and connect the grounding cable with the crocodile clamp at any grounded point, such as the protective contact of a wall socket. Potential related measurement is excellent. To detect sources means I can hold the measuring device down here and walk through the room and take the measurement here in the frontal area. The closer I get to the source of disturbance, the more load is displayed and the further I move away from it, the less the display shows. I hope this video has helped you measure properly and safely with your ME3030 in the future.